So we've learned that whether a woman's slaves can eat truma, can eat um, the essentially the 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 set the, the there's a truma is this what is set aside from crops to be given to kohanim, and a woman who marries into a priestly family, or for that matter the slaves that she brings into the priestly family, or for that matter the slaves or the offspring of the priest, they can all eat truma. They can all eat from this set aside food just as much as the priest can. Having said that. We, we learned that if a woman, um, let's say, is married to a priest, she can eat truma. But if he dies and she's childless, she returns to the state that she returns to her father's house and her previous state. So in other words, if she's an ordinary Israelite, she cannot eat truma and neither can her slaves for that matter. If she's married to the priest, she can eat truma and so can her slaves. And now we're going to look at questions of inheritance well we're going to look at further gray areas but we're going to begin with questions of inheritance and we're going to look by incidentally at the status of a fetus but israel la kohen. so an ordinary israelite woman who married a kohen so by marrying that kohen she is eligible to eat truma and for that matter all her slaves are as well mate he dies so the priest has died now and he's actually left her pregnant. So the priest does have an heir. The property of the priest passes to his children. But in this case, the children are not born yet. There's a fetus. And by the way, if the child had been born, then the mother's status would go with the child. So once that this child is born, he's a Kohen, he can eat Truma, and certainly the mother can eat Truma as well. But what is the situation before he's born? Because we've said that it, it's a verse in Vayikra. If, if the priest dies and the mother is childless, she goes back to her father's house. So the question, he leaves her pregnant. That's almost like a question, you know, what is the status of this fetus? Does it make her childless so that she goes back to her, the, her father's house and the state she was in in her father's house? Or is it that the fetus is considered to inherit and therefore she can take the status of her son and carry on eating trauma? That's the question we're really looking at. And the Mishnah rules. A slave can't eat trauma because of the share of the fetus. In other words, the, the fact the fetus is going to inherit and the fetus would at that point allow the woman to eat truma doesn't work um, doesn't does not work before the fetus is born so there's some event on birth some transfer of status on birth that does not happen at conception that's what the fetus that's what this mishnah teaches and rabbi yosi is going to give a general principle Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi says that the existence of a fetus, posel, he can stop, he can take away from a woman the right to eat truma, but he can't give her the right to eat truma, as if the, the fetus were, if you like, were strict in both directions with the, with the fetus. Divrei Rabbi Yossi. That's the words of Rabbi Yossi. And the sages, the sages seem to disagree with him. And certainly the Gemara thinks the sages are disagreeing with him because they throw, they, they kind of throw the opposite challenge at him. So the sages say to him, Amrulo, they say to him, because you've testified to us concerning a daughter of Israel who married a Kohen. What about the opposite situation? What about a daughter of a priest who married a priest? Because in the question of a daughter of a priest who married a priest, well, if she's going to return to her father's house, well, of course, in her father's house, she can eat from her. But if she's part of her husband's house, she can eat from her. So, and, but, so the sages continue, mate, 
the, so in that situation, a daughter of a priest, married to a priest, mate, let's say he dies and he leaves her pregnant, her, her slaves won't be able to eat from her, and neither will she, by the way. Because we're, we're saying, we're, if you like, we're, we're doubly, we're doubly um, we seem to be st- we, we seem to be strict in both directions with this fetus. We're saying that the fetus disqualifies, but it can't bestow the right to eat. In other words, it can disqualify for, for her from eating by asserting the fact that she's no longer a childless woman who goes back to her father's house. But it can't qualify her to eat by saying, look, this fetus inherits the state of its father and therefore allows its its mother to eat from her. So she's kind of caught in the middle. And the, the rabbis are going to say to Rabbi Yossi, you can't take this position because it, it, it's a reductio ad absurdum. You get an absurd situation where someone could get stuck. Uh, uh, the daughter of a priest who's married to a priest can just get stuck in the middle and not connected to either person's house. And the Mishnah is then going to go on to give various other examples of um, other examples of situations where there is um, where, if you like, uh, uh, the mother can can sit, can be between the two places. So the Mishnah is going to give a list of there, the the fetus, ve'hayabam. The fetus, the, the yavam, the betrothal, the deaf mute, and the boy who's nine years and a day old, these all disqualify, but they can't bestow the right to eat. In other words, someone who's... So we're going to expand out the list. So the... The, the the fetus we've already dealt with that until it's actually born the status doesn't doesn't change the yavam I think this refers to a yavam who has not yet completed yibum so in other words she's connected to the yavam but she hasn't contemplated she hasn't created yibum ha'erosin this is someone who's betrothed but who's not yet married so she's betrothed to a priest but she's not married to him. Someone who's deaf mute, someone who's not capable, doesn't have capacity to enter a contract. So the marriage there may not be valid. From a halakhic point of view, the Mishnah assumes that sexual intercourse with someone who is someone who is over nine years old has some halachic status so that means that it may disqualify it has some halachic status it may disqualify her for example from eating truma if it's a forbidden relationship but it doesn't allow her to eat truma if if the person in question is a client what if we don't know really how old this boy is? If we don't really know whether he's reached puberty or not. Or let's have another situation of doubt. Uh, uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure whether this part of the Mishnah begin, sort of belongs with the part above or the part below. Um, if a house collapses on a man upon his brother's daughter, it, it's clear here that he's married to his brother's daughter. It is permitted in the Mishnah to marry your marry your niece. And of course, if the um, in that situation, of course, the yibum is forbidden because you can't. Um, it's a classic situation of forbidden yibum. You can't marry you, you while you can. Your niece can be married to your brother. Your while you can marry your you can marry your niece. Your brother can't marry his daughter. 
So the Yibum is forbidden. And of course, all of the rival wives of this wife would also be forbidden. The Enya Dua Eza Met Rishon. We don't know who died first. So if the father, if the man died first, then the if the man died first and he dies childless, this is the presumption, then of course the relationship, a relation, the relationship of Yibum is forbidden, both for the daughter and for any of her rival wives. If the daughter died first, then the rival wife is not forbidden. She's under an obligation of Yibum. And we don't know, right? So we don't know whether she's obligated or forbidden. And so the Mishnah says, Saratach, or let's say, the law meet Yabemet, her rival wife, so the, the other, the, or the other wives of this deceased man would perform Chalitza, but not Yibum, because we don't know whether they're permitted or forbidden. So we take the strict view, we perform Chalitza, but not Yibum.